Unity is a great game engine that you can get started in, very easy to learn, uh, very, very easy to bring in great um, game assets like this. So you can see that we have uh, a basic level that we created for this learning path. So it's all split apart into 2D uh, pieces. Uh, but by this time, whenever you're ready to bring in the character, I would hope that you have all of your movement scripts and everything ready to go. So you can see in the game view on the bottom there, I've got, oh, that's not the right character, is it? That's a little capsule with a, a box sword. Uh, this is what I've been working with uh, up to this point. So I've just been programming its movement, how it's supposed to behave, and getting him to move here. So a uh, capsule with a box is not very fun, is it? Uh, it's not, not very pretty. It can jump. Oh, I can even double jump if you want to do that. You know, that's, that's pretty cool, right? Okay, let's make it pretty. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to pick up right where Delano had left off. Uh, this is where we're going to take the FBX file that Delano had exported out for us. We're going to bring in the main character, just the rig and the model. We're not going to worry about the animations just yet. Delano had said that uh, there are two ways that we'll bring in animations. We can do that with a single file, meaning a single FBX file, and it has all of the animations in it. I would have to slap Delano for doing that because it makes more work for me. I prefer lots and lots of different FBX files. So that way I can just say, yep, there's an attack animation. I can bring that in, uh, hook it up, and get it ready to go. So that way I don't have to split it up. So to get started with this, we're going to bring in our character. Uh, to do this, we need to first import it into our project. So to import an object into the project, we need to go to the project panel. And then we're going to choose the folder we want to bring it into. In my case, I'm going to bring it into the models folder. So you can see that I already have some of these files already here, but I'm going to bring in a brand new one just for clarity. So to do this, we'll right click in our project uh, panel and we're going to go to import new asset. Here it's going to allow us to browse through the folder to find our FBX file. In this case, I'm looking for my ghost knight underscore rig dot FBX. This is the file. It doesn't have any animations on it. Okay, so it's just going to be the boring pose. Okay, nothing cool. So we'll import that. Now what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be setting up the rig so Unity knows what to do with it. So this is going to be done in the inspector. So you'll need to make sure that you have the proper file selected down here in your project view. And then you're going to go to your inspector and you'll see that we have three tabs. We have model, we have rig, and we have animation. So I'm only worried about the model for right now. I'll start out with that first. So the, what we'll need to configure is its scale factor. Uh, we've already set it up in Maya to work uh, very well right here with Unity, so we don't really need to change that. Um, optimize mesh, usually the default works pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and leave everything alone. I'm also going to import the, the materials. Now if I wanted, I could create the materials here in Unity and then set all that up myself, but I'm going to save myself some time. So we're finished with the model. You can see a preview of that right in here. Okay, so you can see that it's in that boring pose. And then we're going to go to the rig. This is extremely important because this is what's going to drive all of our information for our animations. So the first thing that we'll need is our animation type. And this is actually uh, the type of rig. This is very important because we have four different options. We have none. This is, you're going to use this for static meshes. Who knows what a static mesh is? Okay, can somebody answer that for me? It doesn't move, so it's something like a prop, like a barrel or something like that. It's not going to move at all. Thank you very much for answering. So what we would use for a static mesh is none, but seeing how we have animation, on this object, it's considered a skeletal mesh. So here we have three options. We have legacy, and legacy is using an old version of animation where we'll actually script um, all of the movements and the animations. But I don't want to do that. I want Unity to handle a lot of that for me. So I also have generic and I have humanoid. Because this character is a little bit different, what's different about this character than a human? No limbs, okay, so he's just got the gloves. So we've got this empty space in there. We don't want to use a humanoid because it's going to be looking for that information. Okay, so we're just going to use generic. So once that has been set, we need to create our avatar definition. The avatar is going to hold all of the information of that animation. 
and uh, we want to make sure that we can um, bring in our animations and apply that to that using this avatar definition. And I'll show you what that means here in just a moment. Now, most importantly, you need to define what your root node is. So Delano had mentioned the root. So the root is that point in the skeleton where the ground is going to be. So if you notice that bone that was very weirdly positioned uh, between his feet, that is the root node. Okay, that's where uh, it's going to place that at zero, zero. So let's go ahead and apply this. And you'll see that in my list, it's recognizing a couple of things. It's recognizing the model. That's not what I want. I want root zero, one. So let's go ahead and choose root zero, one. And then we're going to hit apply. Now with that applied, we can go ahead and move on into animations. This is where we're going to bring in our other files. So under animations, it's saying, oh, there's no animation information here, okay? Remember, this is the rig. It doesn't have any animation information. So where do we get that? Well, we get it from another FBX file that has that in animation information. So let's go ahead and import that. I've gone ahead and already imported those in. Okay, so I have my ghost knights, okay, and you'll see that I have different folders. I have an attack folder, death, idle, and jump, and also a run. This just helps me to keep things organized, and I can choose them very, very quickly. Um, let's go ahead and take one of those, and let me double click on, uh, let's do the idle first. That's going to be very easy. You'll notice that I have two different idles. I have an underscore B and an underscore F. Uh, that stands for forward and backward. Uh, my character is going to be, uh, you know, I'm, I need to be able to flip it back and forth. So I'm going to use the animations to drive that, um, that look. So with the knight idle underscore F, you'll see that I'm under my animations. Let's just take a look at some of those options there. So I have import animation that's going to bring that in. Usually all of this up here, I'm going to leave as default. It's going to help me with any errors that might happen um, during that animation process. Um, we need to give the clip, the animation clip, a name. Okay, so make sure that it's a name that you can recognize, you know exactly what it does, so that way you can grab it at any point whenever you're hooking all of this up. So leaving it as animation underscore zero one, bad idea, don't do that, it's going to be very, very annoying. So here you'll see that we have our start and our end. Now it's already detected that for us, so it's 1 and 17. I don't have to set that up, okay? Now an idle animation is what's considered a looping animation. So that means that it's just playing from 1 to 17 and then it starts back over, just like Alano has showed us before. We need to make sure that we check loop time so that way it will go back in the game. Uh, bake pose, all of this information should come in exactly the same. But just to double check, you'll want to make sure that your bake into pose is checked on the root transform rotation and the right root transform position Y. That means the up and down. Okay? So we're just going to, to make sure that that is constrained to the root node position. Um, everything else is okay, so I'm just going to leave that just the way it is, and we'll hit apply to that. So, now how do I get rid of that little capsule guy? Well, let's take a look at the character in the scene. So this is from the prototyping phase. I have a character game object, okay, that's been brought in, and then I also have this little file here that's called night model. This is just a placeholder. Okay, it's just used for graphics. Uh, we want to think about our characters not as physical objects that um, interact with the world. We think of them as just graphics. I know that's very mean to say. It's like saying your character is not a person, but it really isn't. It's just graphics. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and delete out that night model um, to just kind of take a look at how it's made up of. The, the night model is actually the capsule, the sword is the box. So we'll just delete that, oh. and then give it a no name there. Let's hit delete, and there he's gone. Okay. However, if I go ahead and I hit play here, oops, let's actually delete him before we hit play, there we go. So if I come in and I hit play, you'll notice that my camera is still moving around. Okay. 
see that up at the top here. So the character is actually still moving. So I just need to put in the graphics. All right, so to do this, let's go ahead and bring in our knight rig. So we're going to go to Ghost Knight. And let me find it here. Uh, I'm looking for model. There we go. Let's bring in that knight rig one. And I'm going to drag that right into my scene. Now you'll notice that your character may be facing the wrong direction. Okay, that's okay. We're just going to go ahead and rotate him out. So we'll rotate him along the Y axis. We'll do 90 degrees, and now he's facing the correct direction. Now I know that that's kind of zooming in and out at kind of an odd angle. If that ever happens in Unity, just hit F with the item selected, and that will zoom in. Okay. So with that, we have our night rig. I like to rename it. Uh, so that way I know exactly what it is. So I'm going to say ghost underscore night. I like to keep things clean. And then we're going to parent that to our character game object. Okay, so let's go ahead and parent that to character. And there we go. So now we have our graphics. Now let's go ahead and hit play. Let's just take a look at what's going to happen. Notice that the character looks like he's below the ground. Okay, but he's still moving along with everything. But what's happening? Well, what's happening is our pivot points for the graphics and the character game object are not matching. So to match that, we'll simply grab the Ghost Knight object, and then we're going to come over here to our transform and hit reset. So what that will do is it's going to reset the transform information, but it's going to snap that to the correct pivot. So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and re-rotate that 90 degrees. Oops, let's try 90, not 9. One more time. There we go. All right, now I know that he's a little bit above where he's supposed to be because he's going to be a little bit above the ground. Okay, so if I hit play again, it kind of looks like he's almost there, but not quite. So I'm actually physically going to move that object down to where his feet rest right on top of that ground check. Okay. So now whenever I hit play, he drops in, and it looks like he's in the world there. Now I can go ahead and I can move around and there we go. So it's just graphics, right? Okay, not a big deal. Now what we want to do is we want to take care of that animation. How do we get that hooked up? Let's go ahead and close this down here. Let's hit play to stop that. And with our Ghost Knight character selected, let's go over to our inspector. You're going to notice one thing. We have a component called animator. The animator is going to control the animations that are tied to this model. Now the only way that we can tie it to that model is through that avatar. So remember the avatar definition that we had talked about? This is where it hooks up. Okay. Now we also need what's called an animator controller. The animator controller is going to allow us to use the mechanim system. Everybody heard of mechanim in Unity? Okay, just a couple of us. Mechanim is a, a visual interface that we can tie animations together and tell them how to blend. Okay, so we'll see that here in just a moment. So we have our controller. It doesn't have anything on it, so we need to apply that controller. So the controller that I want to use is going to be in my models folder. Oops, actually not this one. Let's go to Anim Clips, Ghost Knight, and here I have Ghost Knight. Okay, this is an animation controller. So let's go back to our Ghost Knight character. We should see this in our inspector. And let's simply drag and drop that file right there. All right. So now if I hit play, what's going to happen? You'll notice that my character is beginning to animate. Okay. Now he's stuck in the fall position. Okay. There's a problem with that. So this is part of the jump. Okay. The reason that it's happening is because it's not getting my ground check. So it's saying, oh, I'm not grounded. So I'm just going to play this animation. Not a big deal. Let's go ahead and strip that out. So to do that, to see all of our animations that we've applied to this, we need to open that animator inside of the animator window. So to do that, we'll double click on the animator, and there it goes. So here you can kind of see how this is all hooked together. Notice the, uh, the animator that is in orange. That is your default animation. So what's happening here, if I double click on grounded F, is it's a blend tree. So
So it's blending two animations between one another. Now you'll see that this is all set up. Um, there's probably a lot of things that are very confu uh, confusing here. So we have parameters. Uh, I'm talking about blends and all of that. So that's probably a little further than we want to go. So let's just bring in a simple animation, that idle animation, and apply that to this character. So to do that, let's go ahead and create a brand new animator. So I'm going to do create animator, or animator controller, I should say. Let's give it a different name. Let's say Ghost Knight, oops, if I could spell today, underscore zero one, just for S and Gs. All right. I'm not going to say what that means. Uh, so let's take this animator controller and let's apply that back to our character. So to do this, we'll select the Ghost Knight character. This is the graphics. This is the rig, remember? So let's take Ghost Knight underscore zero one. Let's plug that into the animator controller. So now that's going to be animated by that. All right. So now if I go back to my scene and I hit play, you'll see that our knight is now back at that boring position. Let's add our idle animation. To do this, let's close this down. And I'm going to go to my animator window. And all I have to do at this point is go ahead and select the animation that I want and drag it right in there. Oops, that's not going to happen. So what's going on? What am I trying to drag in? I'm trying to drag in my FBX file. I don't want that. I want my animation clip. So let's make sure that we get that. The animation clip is going to be found under the FBX file. So you need to expand it. And there you have night idle, idle underscore f. Now we can take this file and drag that in. Notice how it comes in. The color is orange. What does that mean? Default. It's the default animation. Awesome. Thank you. So if I go ahead and hit play now, what's going to happen? Whew, I'm glad it played the idle animation. OK, so now we're playing that idle animation. That's all it has to do. So now, whenever we start getting into the process of creating movement, how do we get into run um, and things like that? That's a little bit more of a complicated process. We have to bring those animations in. We have to hook those up to programming. And that's a lot longer time than I have today. And plus, my brain is going to fall out today because I worked all day today as well. And I don't want your brain to fall out. So, uh, so this is a basic way of bringing in those animations. Now, like I said before, if you want to learn more about how to bring in those animations, hook those up to inputs using W, A, S, and D. Uh, we have the tutorials on, to show you how to do that.